Yo YouTube, what is up? It is your boy FaZe J Smooth here coming to the video today. If you guys are new, you already know. Subscribe, like, know the gang. You know how to do. Subscribe, do your thing, baby. Okay. So right now, um, I'm actually doing my first ever mukbang. Uh, I thought about doing this for a little bit while, and I actually just flew in from Vegas, so I don't want to go get the food. We just ordered straight to the crib. We're gonna do a little Q and A. I went on my Instagram and just did like one little question. You guys asking questions about things you want to know about me or just anything random that you know that I want to answer. If you guys want to see me do more of this, let me know in the comment section below. We may do another one. I want to try to keep it healthy because I know you have to eat a lot of food and like I don't want to be OD with like just eating like burgers and stuff like that. So I got me a little bit of Chipotle here. Right here we got a Chipotle bowl. See, I also, if you know me, I don't be liking like sour cream and stuff like that. So I got a straight steak bowl. I got a little veggies. I got a little too much lettuce, white rice and steak. Um, and then over here, we got some chicken tacos with white rice, veggies, and some lettuce on top of that as well. And then some chips. And then you gotta always have a Bev. Always have a Bev with you. All right, pause the video right now. For real, you need to like, subscribe right now. We're on the road to 100K. We're very, very close. So for the happy holiday cheers, you need to do it. You got 10 seconds. All right, bet. Good job. Anyways, get into it. All right, the first question from I Hate Ops 949. What a name. He said, Did you grow up in the hood? Crying face emoji. Yes and no, in the way I did and I didn't, actually. Uh, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Actually, if you guys don't know that about me, uh, that's why I like, I'm a Buckeye fan, uh, OH. And also, I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan. But I lived in Dayton, Ohio, until I was about like eight years old. Dayton was pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie, from what I remember. It's just, it was, it's really, really bad. And it's gotten worse over the years. But my mom got me out there, uh, and we moved to Arizona at a young age, um, just for a better opportunity. And she was going to school, my dad had a job out there as well. So it's kind of like, a perfect maturation for them to just move us um, and give us a different view of life. Arizona wasn't too bad, uh, but I always stayed away from that stuff regardless. I was a really simple kid. I played video games, I played sports, and I stayed in my house. I didn't really do anything extra. Um, I didn't really go outside. I mean, I did, you know, when I lived in Ohio, I actually did play like, like we had neighbors. Uh, we lived on this hill, so I lived like down the, I lived down the street. We used to go up the street every weekend, and us and like three other neighbors, we used to always play. Um, it would be like 14 kids, because one neighbor's house, they had like seven kids. Like the mom and dad was getting it, so it was huge. But we would play kickball, baseball, everything you think of, just, you know. So yeah, but not really, I never really kind of grew into the hood. Question from Blinded X, Blind X, I don't know, I can't read names. Uh, when did you start playing video games? I started playing video games at a very, very young age that I can remember. I mean, the first console I had was a Dreamcast with my brother. We used to share that together. Um, I remember playing like Ready to Rumble on that joint. So that was like what? I was like four years old, probably, playing Dreamcast. I uh, also played, you know, the PS1, my dad and my uncle, um, also PS2. 360, everything like that. But I played video games at a very, very young age. Even the Game Boy and the PSP kept your boy in, in the track, you feel me? The next question is from Roma Press. Roma Press, I, I like I said, I really can't read your guys' names. I'm the worst at reading. Well, this is a bit of a personal question. It says, how do you manage so much undeserved hate? At all the people in the new squad, uh, PD, keep killing it. Um, appreciate the love. Uh, honestly, I think we all get our own type of hate in a certain way. Um, Dante Booyah, sw uh, Swag and I, um, Booyah gets hate and the kid doesn't even talk, so I don't know. It's just, it's a mixture of stuff like that. And But for me, I don't try to get into it. Sometimes I read into it and it gets annoying, but uh, personally, honestly, when I do anything, when I post a video, when I post a tweet, when I post a picture, I post it one for my leisure. I don't, I'm never, I've never been a person that needs other people's approval. Um, I'm perfectly fine and confident of who I am as a person. Um, there's only one me, so I'm gonna be the best me I can be. And then also, um, I get, I post and I literally get off. I don't like scroll through my comments. I don't do none of that stuff. And luckily like on Instagram, like people who you follow will be like their first on the comments. So, and you know, also it can be jealousy. People that want your, want to be in a position that we're at and you know, it's stuff like that. But. It's all love. I just try to focus on the positive and people who support me. I got a great group around me. Even though they pissed me off, I still love these guys all in my heart. So it's it's all good. I don't really try to read too much into it. All right, next question from X Toy X Yosti. Um, what is your 
most favorite sport, by far basketball. I like every sport though. I went to school for sports management and uh, I actually started like really like enjoying like, I started enjoying different sports that I feel like everybody can't pick up and just play, like tennis. I think tennis is a fire sport to watch. I think golf was pretty dope too. It's a patient game. But by far my most favorite sport has always been basketball. I've always loved that as a kid. It's just been my thing. From um, Amar Spinona. It says, what inspired you to start streaming as a career? Um, I mean, streaming was never like something I wanted to make. I just, I don't know, streaming is something I just started doing. But the first thing is, um, in high school, uh, me and Swag went to high school together. That's how we know each other. Uh, me, him, and his brother, Money B. And I remember when he started playing Call of Duty. By the way, I was probably one of the first people to introduce him to that. Um, when he got an Xbox finally, um, started playing Call of Duty. He was the one that came up to me and was like, yo, let's make a dual YouTube channel. And I was down for it. We're like 15 at the time. And I didn't know nothing really about YouTube. I didn't know YouTubers. I didn't know nothing. I kind of knew it about music and I would kind of listen to music on YouTube. And even at 14, 15, and that was like what, 2012, 2011 at that time. But um, I never like, you know, thought I would try to do something with it. And you know, when he came to me, so we were actually gonna make a dual YouTube channel. He was gonna do like the Call of Duty side. And because I played different games, I was gonna do like Call of Duty in 2K at the time. And no one's doing 2K, so I kind of could have been doing like, the big dude, but you know, I couldn't really do that. My mom didn't let me play the game on the weekdays. So it was really tough to do that. And just imagine asking your parents for like a hundred or fifty dollar device to do a YouTube, you know, they kind of look at you like you're crazy. But I remember coming home from college years later and I would I get back on my laptop. For some reason on my Twitter, a Twitch a Twitch link came up. And I forgot all about Twitch. I used to watch Twitch a little bit. So like when Nick Merch was doing like wagers and like BO3 and BO2 and stuff like that. I would watch that, but that was really it. But I remember I remember hearing about Twitch, but I never like watched it. I went on that Twitch link that day and I just went to the 2K section because that's what I was playing mostly at the time. And I was watching some people, uh, shout out to these people, uh, Chenzo323 and Great the Jet. Those are the first streams I ever remember watching. And they're in there doing like song requests. They're talking about music. They're talking about like just athletes and debates and just everything like that while playing the game. And I was like, what? I said, you can do this? And instantly I knew, I was just, I had a sheer confidence that I knew I could do that. That was basically when I knew, I was like, okay, I wanna start trying to, trying to stream. I still didn't jump into it till like months later. And even like Swag at the time, he was doing great on YouTube. I think he probably had like over 500K maybe at this time. This is like 2016, 17. So he probably almost had over like 500K. He was like, he had a pretty big YouTube channel and he was just doing strictly YouTube. And I remember I was talking to him and a group of friends and I was like, yo, I think I'm gonna start streaming. And they're like, they believed in me. They're just like, it's really tough. But I just never liked trying to get a video and find an idea and try, I, I don't know, I thought YouTube was really hard. So I thought Twitch was easy. I could just hit start stream and go. I just loved it ever since. And I didn't really care that I had one viewer. I had Nightbot talking to me only like, literally I had one viewer for like a while. Like I didn't get paid through Twitch for like months. Like I didn't care about anything about that. I just loved just trying to find somebody to interact with. And when one turned to two and two turned to 10 and 10 turned to 40 and 40 turned to 100, you know, it just becomes a great process and it's been so fun over the years. So um, just thank you for everybody who's been there from the beginning, but yeah. The streaming stuff, I've always just knew I could do it. Just had to take your time with it. A question from D Hunt 85 He says, since this year is ending, what are you thankful for and what do you plan to accomplish next year? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I actually, probably this video will be out before this next one will. I have a recap of 2021. I want to do a recap video. But probably the most thankful thing I can think about um, is a mixture of three things. Um, one, new squad, um, us coming together and just creating um, nothing out of something. Just a bunch of friends that play Call of Duty and being able to, um, you know, change our lives through streaming. The second thing is uh, Faceland. There's a story about Faceland um, that I'll talk about probably right now, actually. Basically, during the pandemic, Chris was our swag was already in phase. I think he got in the phase like in February or April of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he actually hadn't like he hadn't been to LA yet because of COVID, and that was like the peak of COVID. Uh, sometime during like the summer of last year, we ended up going to LA for a few days to meet some people in Vegas. I don't know if I'm allowed, I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to tell the story, um, but one of the talent management at phase because at that time we were always streaming all the time playing Warzone and stuff like that. And I remember sitting there on the couch in the face house and one of the guys from town management was like, oh yeah, we're probably gonna recruit you guys to face. And I'm sitting there like, no the f you're not. Like, 
What are you talking about? Like, I was just like, you know, growing up, people would tell me stuff, and I just like, okay. Well, I didn't believe that at all. Cause you know, it's phases, you know, this is one of one. This is one of the biggest orgs in the world. And so and you have to have an established presence, I felt. And I wasn't there. Like I didn't have 100K. I think I had 100K on Twitch at the time. I think I just hit 100K. I didn't have 100K on YouTube. I didn't have like, my socials were cool, um, but I wasn't verified. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I just still hadn't made an impact on what I'm trying to do. And you know, they gave us that chance and they pulled the trigger on us. And so for FaZe Clan to just give us that opportunity and just to keep giving us opportunities is absolutely amazing. So I'm thankful for them. And lastly, you guys, even the haters, <laughs> the haters, the people who love me and support me, um, the people who, you know, check up on me time to time, those, you guys, I wouldn't be here without you. I always say that and I always continue to say that. There's no J Smooth without, you know, the Smooth Gang. So I'm just thankful for that. And my family, of course, for also believing in me. There's a few more questions I wanna ask. I could be here for like 40 minutes, but I really don't want to. I kind of want to be here for a little bit. Uh, somebody asked me my favorite cartoon in Ninja Turtle. Uh, shout out to my boy, Tony. My favorite cartoon, I don't know. I hate asking favorites because I watch so much different things. In the top of my head, I can really think about Jimmy Neutron growing up. I love Jimmy Neutron a lot. Um, from the Nickelodeon side and Fairy Our Parents. Those are probably my two favorite on Nickelodeon. Disney Channel was probably, I think Kim Possible is dope. I like Power Family a lot, but I think Kim Possible is up there. I like Zack and Cody, but it's more like, it's not really a cartoon, you know what I mean? Cartoon is like animated. Well, I think Kim Possible is the first one I can think about for Disney Channel. And then for a Cartoon Network, I liked all the action stuff that they had. Samurai Jack was absolutely amazing. I love Samurai Jack. I also like Justice League, even though it's kind of on Boomerang. I think Justice League is a super underrated show. But probably Teen Titans if I think about it. And my favorite Ninja Turtle was uh, Michelangelo. When I used to play the video games on PS2, I said, I don't know. I just rock with Michelangelo. He was a goofball. He was an idiot, but the nunchucks was fire. What's the biggest difference between LA and Arizona? Um, growing up in Arizona was a bit of a culture shock coming from Ohio when I was so young. But Arizona was, I say this about Arizona. And if you grew up in Arizona, you know what I'm talking about. And there's no diss to the city. Um, I love Arizona. I think Arizona was great. Actually, I didn't like Arizona when I first moved there. I'm not gonna lie to you. I actually hated living there. I actually really wanted to move back to Ohio or just get out of Arizona and just go somewhere new. My mom was actually gonna move us to Tennessee, but she, we didn't want to move again because I'm not going back to the Midwest. I didn't like Arizona. I just, I don't know. I was uncomfortable. But when I left for college in Virginia and came back, I loved visiting. But I'll say this about Arizona. I think Arizona has a lot of talent and a lot of great ideas. But I think the things that get in our way is that we're, we don't have the information to get to the places we wanna get to. And honestly, it's kinda like the wild, wild west in there. It's kinda like, it's a zoo. Like, and I don't know it like that. It's just a lot of like, we don't bring, we need to bring our communities together. So for example, like music. You can't name, I can't name, I can't name one artist. I can't name an artist, a rapper, that's from Arizona. That's mainstream, popular, or nothing. But the reason why you have all these places from like Memphis and Atlanta and New York and LA and you know, Florida, is because the, the locals support their local rappers, they support their local musicians. AZ, we don't really do that. The radio station is still playing like, hate it or love it by the game. Like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? There's not like, I feel like there's not a much there should be more opportunity for, you know, people to have a platform. Um, and that's what I try to want to do back in Arizona as well. Um, I think the sports scene has gotten a lot better over the years from when I came up to now. So like, that's like, kind of like, I guess a success route. But overall, it's a it's a beautiful city. It's a super fast growing city. And I did enjoy it. I do enjoy the food. You know, I enjoy the lifestyle. It's spacious so you can have your own space. LA is, as you guys know, I mean, it's fast packed here. Um, everything's crammed, everything's, it's crazy as heck. But I'll say that, you know, in LA, I remember, you know, cause LA is super expensive, but being in LA, if you just meet one or two people, you can get to where you want to get to. Um, you just have to be ambitious and you have to be um, positive and you have to believe in yourself and you have to be patient. But LA, all you need to do is want to know one or two people and to get to somewhere you want to be. So those are some differences. Who is my biggest inspiration? Um, my two biggest inspirations is probably my mother and uh, Swag. I'll tell you why. My mom, because growing up, she sacrificed a lot to give me a good life. Extremely a lot to, to, to have a, 
to have a good life as a kid. She never wanted me to worry about anything. She just wanted me to um, go to school and just do the things I love. And she always believed in me, even with the gaming stuff. Um, she kind of like, at the first part of it, it was kind of like teetered, but like, when I have a mindset I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna still do it. And so she's just like, she trusted in that process. And then also being with Chris, she saw like what it can possibly happen. Um, so yeah, my mom has always just did everything for me. And I told her to start doing things for herself um, cause I could take it, you know what I mean? So probably my mom is one and then also swag. Um, just coming from where we come from and just his drive and his passion uh, is something that you know you need. How I always say this, like how I talk about basketball. I love I love basketball. I can talk basketball all day. It's how he is with his his work in Call of Duty. He can talk Call of Duty all day. If it's a video idea, if it's something he wants to do, if it's something that happens, he can talk. He leaves, he eats, breathes, sleeps at this Call of Duty, um, and he's amazing at what he does. And you see the passion that he he has with it. Um, so he's absolutely fire with that. And just seeing, I mean, being 17 or 18 years old living in Arizona in the summer and he's sitting in a garage with no AC and a small fan making videos is absolutely absurd. Like, and I don't know if he'll tell you that story, but I will. Um, if you don't know that about him, but yeah, the kid is a psycho. And y'all know, Arizona gets high. It gets 110 to 112 degrees. And he's in the garage playing the game all day. And so, you know, just seeing his passion and to see where he's, where we came from to where he got um, is is very inspiring. So, and to just give people like me and other people look like me uh, a platform has been also just a huge blessing and something that we want to continue to keep inspiring and try to keep giving to, you know, our community. All right, um, I'll probably ask one more question here. If you could have one conversation with any person alive or dead, who would it be? This is a very interesting question because I have to really, really think about this. If I can have a conversation with somebody just either dead or alive, this is a hard question to answer because I want to talk to somebody. You know what? I can answer this in a few ways. From the entertainment side of what we've been through, two people would have been, and could still be, Mike Malak and Tim the Tapman. Why? Because Mike, Mike is someone who has a, such a different outlook on life. Coming from the struggle of what he came through to building himself up and to now give himself this humongous platform. And it's not about the platforms. It's about just keeping the mindset of like where you come from and how did you get through it? And just, you know, everything like that, just dissecting that. I love like learning more and getting more information about people and stuff like that. So Mike would be one. And Tim the Tap Man, because, uh, I mean, Tim's one of the streams for like, what, nine years, something like that. And just how did he keep his head above water with everything? You know what I'm saying? Like, Tim gets ripped a lot. You know, he gets made fun of and stuff like that. But like, how do you keep that positive edge and um, just keep loving to do what you do? Um, so probably breaking out with those two, uh, Mike Wing like and Tim Tap Man. But from like other sides, probably like a Denzel Washington or a Will Smith or a Kevin Hart, one of those three. Um, or hopefully all those three. Breaking down and just like giving me as a young black entertainer, uh, cause I don't call myself a streamer. I think of myself as like a personality or entertainer. Like just getting, giving tools about life and how it like, just the next steps and about doing things I wanna do. So probably somebody like those. Um, and a, a like I said, having just a different outlook on life. Um, I'm really, I'm really big on like having like older positive or just older men in my life to give me guidance and mentor um and just you know help me figure out you know this whole life thing because you know there's no book there's no manual on it you know when you graduate high school you just get thrown into the world if you go to college or not you know you have to figure out who you are what you're gonna do where you're gonna live you know and you know there's no book for that there's no journal of how to live life you just have to live it so but anyways um Thank y'all for that Q and A. Um, I love like, I know a lot of people want to still like learn a little bit more about my life. So hopefully this helps you get a little insight about who I am and just everything like that. Uh, there's a lot of questions, obviously, you know, can only answer so many, but thank y'all for the love and support. If you guys want to see this again, like I said, let's try to get this video a thousand likes. Maybe we could do another buck thing, something like that. Um, and like I said, if you guys are new, make sure you guys subscribe and like the video. Turn on notifications so you guys don't miss anything else. Christmas is coming soon. I just see this beautiful tree is lit up. So just want to wish you guys a happy holidays. So I hope y'all did enjoy this, but I will catch y'all later, all right? Y'all stay smooth.
Peace.